don't know why I'm back here. Like I told you before, we was only playing for matchsticks. They don't count as matchsticks when you can cash them in for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Sergeant, money don't mean nothing to me. It was just a friendly neighborhood game. In a garage? <laughs> why don't you just make a statement, Joey? I ain't doing nothing until I talk to my lawyer. All right. You can talk to him. After we finish booking him. Um, <laughs> all right, Yorkie. Who's next? Over there, Sergeant. That girl. <laughs> to make one telephone call. Who do you want to call? No one. Absolutely no one. Look, lady, you're in trouble. So you better think of someone. Do you have a lawyer? Oh, well, I've never needed one before. Well, you need one now. If you don't have a lawyer, call your parents. My parents? Are you kidding? You don't know my father. He'd kill me if he saw me like this. And my mother, she'd start screaming and get hysterical. All <laughs> right, all right. <laughs> we'll discuss your family some other time. Right now, I've got people to book. So make a decision. Who do you want to call? Well, there's only one person left. That's my boyfriend. Good. But I can't call him. Lady. Well, you see, he'd never understand. Lock her up again, Yorkie. No, wait. Uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, my name is Donald Hollinger. Just wait your turn with the others. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I got a message to meet someone here. Miss Anne Marie. She, Donald. Well, she's probably at your law Donald. department, something like that. Donald! Donald! Anne! Uh, ex excuse me, I, I, I think I just found her. What are you doing here? I'm in jail. Did you get the message? No, the message said to me, Jack, the jail. It didn't say you were in it. Oh, well, you see what happened? We're in it, all right, but we sure had a ball getting here, didn't we, honey? Uh, Don, this is Martha. Uh, hi! Well, would you mind telling me what you're doing here? Well, would you give me a chance? Well, Anne, what happened to hey, you? Hey, doll, I'm leaving. Can I have my coat back? Oh, sure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Well, what is it? What is that? Well, it's nothing. Well, you don't mean you just be quiet. Aunt, look, would you mind stepping over here, please? Over here. All right, now, Aunt, explain. I explained about last night I was too tired to go to the movies. Too tired? Yeah, but you weren't too tired to run around town in a leopard skin. A leopard skin has got nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's the exposed part you were arrested for. I was not arrested for that. Then what were you arrested for? I don't know exactly. Aunt, how can you not know? Donald, if you're not going to give me a chance to explain, then I don't want to talk about it. Well, I mean, I think it's pretty sad when a person can't discuss a little thing like this without becoming nasty. A little thing? Like, like getting arrested in the leopard skin? <laughs> it's a perfectly logical explanation for everything if you'll just listen. All right. All right, I I'm listening. Okay. Now, you remember I told you I was too tired to go to the movies? Well, right after we hung up, I started doing my ironing. In fact, I was ironing that scarf. You know, the one with all the states on it? And I was just getting the wrinkles out of Idaho when... Jen, on you like this, but I've been trying to call you. Your phone's been busy for an hour and 28 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to Don. Hey, aren't you supposed to be working tonight? Well, uh, yeah. Anne, could I ask a favor of you? Sure. What is it? Well, you know that new show, Lollipops and Onions? Uh-huh. 
Well, one of the girls is leaving the show, and they want me to audition for one of the onions. Hey, that is great. I know, but I have a problem. The audition is tonight, and I have to find someone to fill in at my regular job. So in case I don't get the part, I still have my regular job. Oh, gee, Margie, I'd love to help you out. But you know that phone call I just had from Don? Yeah. Well, you see, we're having our date over the phone because I told him I was too tired to go out tonight. So I really couldn't. He doesn't have to know. Oh, I really have a great chance to get this part. Well, isn't there anybody else you could get? I've tried everybody. And it is just for one night, and you'll make $25. $25? Maybe 30 if the tips are good. Gee, $30. Don's birthday's next week, and I'd really love to get him something nice. Then you'll do it. Okay. Yay! Oh, it's called the cave. Just be there by 8 and ask for Luke. Be there at 8 and ask for Luke? Well, what do I tell him about you? Just tell him anything, except the truth. <laughs> okay. She was desperate, Donald, and as her friend, I really had no choice. So Margie's sick? Uh, yes, she is, sir. You mean she's got a date? Oh, no, sir, she's very sick. Oh, come on. Uh, no, no, really, is she, uh, she's all hot and puffy, and she has this very high temperature, too. That's great. Now we'll have to go out and hire another girl till she gets back. Oh, no, she'll be back tomorrow. I mean, the uh, doctor said that she uh, might recover fast. She's a very strong girl, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, you're here. Can you check coats? Uh, I, I, I think so. Yeah, you can check coats. Go down and see Martha. Martha? Yeah, she's your cave mother. <laughs> Are you the kid that Lou sent? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Let's see now. This, let me see. This nice new one ought to be just the right one for you. This one ought to fit you. What is that? That's your costume. Who well, wears the rest of it? <laughs> You're the rest of it. I can't wear that. Oh, you have to, hon. It's a rule. They make all the girls wear them. Well, it'll make you wear it. Oh, they did until a couple of years ago, but then they started getting complaints. <laughs> Listen, don't you think they'd make an exception? I mean, I'm only here for one night. Well, it's part of the motif, hon. You're just lucky it didn't work here last year. Why is that? This place was called the birthday suit. <laughs> I just can't wear this thing. Well, then you'll have to go talk to Mr. Lou. And let me hold your purse while you go. You go and see him now, huh? Okay. Fine. I just got worried. Eddie's on his way. Big deal. It is, Al. A very big deal. You and Eddie getting together again. Yeah. yeah come in. Uh, Mr. Lou. Can't you see I got company? Well, it's about this. If it don't fit, tell Martha to get you another one. Oh, no, no, it fits. Well, I mean, I don't really know if it fits or not. It's just that, well, Lou, I, I can't wear this. What do you mean you can't wear it? Well, I can, but I, 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 I don't want to. <laughs> well, all the other girls wear them. High-class girls, too. Well, well, well it's so bare. Uh, couldn't I wear something with it? Like what? Well, uh, like, um, like, like my coat. Hey, that's a great idea. See, I have on my coat, and then all the other people will know where to take their coat. <laughs> Look, you put it on, or your friend is out of a job. Hey, what's the wrong with the costume? You're going to look beautiful in it. Maybe. I just never wore anything like this before. Yeah, but it's part of your work, ain't it? Well, sort of. You I... think I'm crazy about these clothes? Well, they're very nice. What's wrong with them? Nothing, but I'd much more rather be wearing Bermuda shorts or a Cuba Vera jacket, but I wear these because it's part and parcel of my work. Oh, mm. well, what kind of work do you do? I'm a legitimate businessman. <laughs> what business are you in? I'm a furrier. You mean a furrier? That's it, a furrier. <laughs> yeah, I get your point, mister. Morgenthaler. Mr. Morgenthaler. Uh, but you see, this really isn't part of my work. I'm just filling in for a friend, just for the night. Oh, you go to school or something? Well, no, I'm a... Well, I mean, I want to be an actress. Oh, so you want to be an actress. Yes. Oh, ah, well, that's very good. I adore the show business. I used to be in it. Oh, really? Oh, what did you do? Before I went into the army, I was a choreographer. <laughs> oh, that's real nice. And you're nice. <laughs> hey, Lou, she's a good kid. Wait, why don't you put her in with us in the private dining room where she won't be so embarrassed? I'll call you back. Well, all right, but you got to do coats until we can find someone to do coats for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lou. And thanks a lot, too, Mr. Al. Ah, uh, they'll mention it. And if any guys gets fresh with you in the interdome, <laughs> you just tell Al, huh? 
Okay. Mm. Thanks. How's it going? Oh, it's, it's, it's going fine, just fine. They're not too good, eh? <laughs> no. Well, don't worry. I got you transferred to the private dining room. Oh, did you? Oh, thanks, Mr. L. Oh, what about this? We found a replacement. It'll <laughs> be like old times. <laughs> Wasn't that a nice thing for Mr. Morgenthau to do? Yeah, but you still haven't told me why you were arrested. Well, I'm getting to that. Well, get to it. This way, please. Where am I going? For some questioning. <clears throat> Anne, come here. Wait a minute. Just cover up. Miss Marie? Yes, sir. I'm Lieutenant Silvestri. Sit down, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, this is Donald Hollinger. How do you do, sir? How do you do? He was my one call. I beg your pardon? Well, you know, when you get one call and usually call a lawyer, well, Donald was the one I called. I see. Miss Marie, I'd like to ask you a few questions about what happened at the cave. Uh, L Lieutenant, is, is Miss Marie in trouble? I'll know that better after I question her. <laughs> We're interested in what you know about Al Morgenthaler. Oh, Mr. Morgenthaler. Well, he's a very nice man. Is he? Yes, he is. And he's very considerate. And he was very thoughtful and very protective of me while I was at the cave. What do you know about him? Well, um, I know that uh, he's a furrier now, and during the army he was a choreographer. He also happens to be one of the most notorious underworld figures in this country. Oh, well, he never mentioned that. <laughs> Nice to her is Big Al Morgenthau? The same. How do you know about him? Well, well, I once wrote an article on crime in the United States. You're a reporter? Yes. Yes, with Newsview magazine. Well, this is strictly off the record. Understood? Oh, of course. Of course. I'm not here as a reporter. I'm, I'm here as Miss Marie's friend. He won't tell anybody. All right. Now, Miss Marie, let's get back to Mr. Morgenthau. He certainly didn't seem like a criminal. Number three man in the syndicate. You mean he's not a furrer? A furrier? Yes, he has a fur business, but it's just a front. Yeah, that's the way all those big hoods operate. And Miss Marie, we're particularly interested in his relationship with another man at that party, a Mr. Perel. The florist. Yes, he's a florist, and he makes a lot of his own trade. You mean he goes out and hires killers? No. Phew. He keeps them on staff. I just can't believe it. Well, that's the way it is. Yeah, honey, that's the way it is. Now, please try and think. Well, I am. I'm, I, I'm really trying. You see, they, they did look a little tough, but they all seemed like nice men, except for the bartender. The bartender? Yeah. Yeah, he was a big, burly guy with black hair and big, bushy eyebrows. Dobbs. One of the big ones? No, one of us. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Oh, well, if you know him, why don't you ask him what happened? Well, we have his report. We want additional information. Miss Marie, were you aware of the purpose of this get-together? Yes, I was. It was for drinks and dinner. Now, who are you kidding, Miss Marie? You've been around. A girl doesn't check hats at a joint like the cave without knowing the score. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. I, uh, well, she was just filling in for a girlfriend. What is the score? <laughs> drinks and dinner were just a front. Actually, the real purpose of that meeting was to discuss a merger between the criminal empires of Morgenthaler and Perel. Wow. Really, it was a reconciliation rather than a merger. You see, they used to be partners, and Perel thought he was getting the short end. Oh. Yeah, now it all makes sense. Now what does? Well, the way they talk to each other. Take this down. Take what down? Anything you heard or saw could be important. You mean to say you want me to birdie? <laughs> I mean, chirp? <laughs> Don, what do they call you when you tell them criminals? Dead. <laughs> Anything you tell us will be kept in strict confidence. Well, I, well, I really don't know anything. I mean, I shouldn't have been there in the first place. You're under arrest, Miss Marie. If you want to get out of here, you'll talk. Uh, uh, honey, honey, talk. Go ahead, talk. Well, uh, I'll try and remember. I think Mr. Morgenthaler was being very nice to Mr. Perel. But Mr. Perel wasn't being very nice to Mr. Morgenthaler. 
Hey, hey, what's going on here? Come on, you gentlemen, drink up, drink up. The champagne is going to flow like a river. Come on, I'm picking up the tag. We could afford to be thirsty. Archie, come on, boy. How are you? Hey, Lou, come on, come on. We're going to have a great repast. Come on, get up an appetite and relieve the tension. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, you haven't changed a bit, Eddie. You look just as good as you used to look. <laughs> Thanks, Al. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, Eddie. A long time. November 57, wasn't it? That's right. How many years is that? A long time. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. And, uh... Here we are, gentlemen. Uh, that was a, uh, a bourbon on the rocks. That's right. And then this was a whiskey sour. There you are, sir. And uh, a scotch and soda for you. Are you? And a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just like old times, Eddie. Me with my scotch and soda and you with your beer. What do you mean by that, Al? Oh, nothing, Eddie. Just like old times, that's all. Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? They're just delicious. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we never really had much in common, did we, Al? Oh, what are you talking about, Eddie? What are you talking? When we were kids like that. You remember the old baseball team with me pitching and you catching? Uh... Yeah, that's what I mean, Al. You're always pitching. And I'm always catching. Oh, come on, Eddie. What's the difference? It's the team that counts as long as we get together. Do you think we could ever get together? Like oil and water. <laughs> Miss Marie, we know all that. You do? Yes, we got it from Dobbs. He was there during the cocktails. Oh, that's right. Well, I, I wish I could be more help. I wish you could, too. Did anything happen during dinner? Any detail you can remember, no matter how insignificant? Well, there was one thing. What was that? A man named Lefty. Lefty Varon, one of Morgenthau's henchmen. Go on. Well, right before the first course, Lefty moved from the middle of the table down to the end, right next to Mr. Morgenthau. Yeah, yeah, now that's what I want. Now, what did he say? It must have been something important. Uh-huh. He said that he was left-handed and that he didn't want to bump elbows during dinner because... <laughs> uh, uh, they don't want to hear about that. Well, he said anything important you never can tell. Did they discuss business at all? Just their fronts. Huh? Furs and flowers. <laughs> did they argue about anything? Yes, they did. They argued about the shrimp. Benny the shrimp? No, the shrimp cocktail. You see, Mr. Perel wanted the red sauce, where there again, on the other hand, Mr. Morgan thought of one of the tartars. Miss Marie, we are not getting anywhere at all. Well, you said anything could be important, and I'm just... I know, I know, I know. Well, let's forget that for the moment. Tell us what happened between dinner and the time you came out of the cake. Well... The cake? Oh, now, Donald. You, you mean you came out of one of those cakes, like one of those... I did not. Will you stop that? It wasn't anything like that at all. <laughs> Well, can you tell us what started the fight? Well... The fight? Well, actually, uh, the fight had nothing to do with the cake. Uh, no, actually, it began earlier. It was right after the main course. I'm finished. <laughs> hey, Ann, what's for dessert? Oh, well, there's this lovely nest of old pie, Mr. Ral, and we also have strawberry tarts. I'll take the nestle rod. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, why not? Right, that'll be six nestle rolled pies. There you go. Here you are, sir. Fine. There. Uh, now, Mr. Perel. Strawberry tart, boys. Delicious. Sounds you good. Like you like it. Six of them. Oh, well, I'm afraid there's a little problem. What problem? Well, you see, we only have five strawberry tarts, but we have a lot more nestle rolled pie. We don't want no nestle roth pie. Well, it's very good. Why don't you take a look at it? You mean that, with the crust in the filling? Uh-huh. I hate it. Oh, well, uh, maybe one of your friends would like it. No, they hate it too, right? See? Mr. Perel. It's a matter of principle. If his boys get what they want, so do mine. Well, uh, maybe I could run right out and, and get it. Why should we have to wait? Uh, well, it'll only take two minutes. I'll be right back. Don't bother. You planned this, didn't you, Al? Eddie. You did. Eddie, would I hold a reunion just to hang you up over a lousy strawberry tart? <laughs> That's what I'm asking you, Al. 
Eddie, if I'd have known, I would have bought a hundred strawberry tarts. I would have bought a whole tree full of strawberries. They don't buy you all that, Al. It was a crummy mistake. You're only one short. That's the way it was when we split up the business. Only then I was one city short. Hey. Oh, that strawberry tart and Cleveland, they are the same thing. Oh, let's skip the dessert. I got a great big surprise for you. Bring on the surprise! <laughs> I have a little surprise for you, Al. <laughs> okay, boy. going on out there? There's a fight. What are you doing in here? I'm Miss Friendship, the spirit of harmony and goodwill. I have to come out when I hear a whistle. Oh. How long are they going to fight? Oh, they didn't say. I'm awful cramped. Yeah, I guess you are. How long have you been in here? Half an hour. Half an hour? I guess you know how John Glenn felt. Who? John Glenn. The astronaut. Oh, yeah, I think I heard about that. It was in all the papers. Can you see anything? Nothing much. I hope they're almost finished. I don't think they are. How can you tell? Well, I can see his feet. If they were almost done, I think we'd see some bodies. <laughs> There's my signal. <laughs> it's time for friendship. Bring her out. Let's go be good enough to here. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, And that's everything I know. All right, Miss Marie. All right, what? Well, it's like I figured. They were on the brink of a merger, and both being hotheads, it blew up in their faces before it could happen. Oh, well, I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. Oh, don't worry about it. At least we know the merger won't take place, thanks to the fight. And that strawberry tart. Well, if the fight prevented the merger, then I was a lot more help than I thought. Well, how's that? Will you promise not to tell anybody? I ate the tart. <laughs> well, what's going to happen to me now, Lieutenant? You're free to go. And thank you. Uh, Lieutenant, will this be on her record? No, we'll wipe the whole thing clean. Oh, thank you, sir. That's very nice of you. Don't mention it. Be a smart girl. Stay away from the cave. Well, I have to go back there. What for? I didn't get paid. They'll mail it. Well, what about my leopard suit? Uh, you can mail that in a small envelope. <laughs>